Tonight on The Roast, politicians spending other people's money and politicians being offered money. But first, I spy with my little eye something beginning with Mark Humph. The APEC summit is taking place in Indonesia this week, that time of the year when Asia-Pacific leaders get together to discuss free trade agreements and play dress-ups. I loved him in the birdcage. Tony Abbott was so fashionable, in fact, that he and Canada's Prime Minister Stephen Harper arrived fashionably late to APEC's first general meeting. The host was left waiting and got on without them. And if you're outraged by their tardiness, you've got to remember that both men had a lot on their agenda, specifically gripping well, each other's hands. Really Take my word for it, this sweaty hand too. dance went on for another 20 seconds. And then this happened. That was them negotiating a new bilateral trade agreement. The Australian Motoring Enthusiast Party has terminated its Victorian branch, raising concerns that this one-trick novelty joke of a party isn't fit to be in Parliament. It's claimed a Victorian official organised an interview with Ricky Poofingers Muir without clearing it with Keith Littler, the party's national media liaison officer and, according to his website, producer of the popular Grunt Files DVD and television series. This is where I would question the popularity of Grunt Files, but it's got 31,000 Facebook likes, so what do I know? The now former chairman of the Victorian branch, Scott McDonald, is not happy about the closure and was interviewed by ABC's PM program from behind the wheel of a truck. Say what you will about Scott McDonald, but his enthusiasm for motoring cannot be denied. The tension could mean a split in the Australian motorist enthusiast movement, so look out for a new party on your ballots at the next election. The more enthusiastic Australian motoring enthusiast party. And while the sacking is apparently due to the Victorian branch acting independently of the national executive, I'm not ruling out that the branch was removed as part of Australian Pimp My Ride spin-off, Pimp My Party. Listen up, Australian Motoring Enthusiast Party. Now, we know you be hating on your Victorian party branch, so we've hooked you all up with something that has a little more class. It's a ballot box with a TV in it. It's tight, mother... A financial report has revealed that Peter Jackson's Hobbit trilogy has cost half a billion dollars, or roughly one box of popcorn, if your dad's telling the truth. The money has been spent ensuring none of the charm from the original book makes it into the upcoming movies. Prince Harry looks set to marry Cressida Bonus, his longtime girlfriend and winner of Britain's ponciest name, 2013. And if they do wed, I'm looking forward to constantly hearing about Cressida's sister's bottom. So, with Princes William and Harry out of the picture, thousands of wannabe princesses now have no choice but to develop a crush on a baby. For The Roast, I'm Mark Humphreys. Did you spot what I spied? It was Mark Humphreys' tie. He only has one. Moving on, and Tony Abbott has paid back around $1,600 of taxpayers' money after remembering that he claimed the expenses seven years ago while attending the weddings of Peter Slipper and Sophie Mirabella. The short version is the Prime Minister travels to Slipper's wedding on the taxpayer's dime. He then takes Slipper to task for using the taxpayer's dime on travel expenses before remembering that he, Tony Abbott, also used the taxpayer's dime and he paid it back, saying... I remembered that uh, some seven years ago I'd been to a couple of weddings and so I went back and I checked. Uh, I was uh, advised, because I sought advice on this, uh, that the entitlement was unclear and so in order to avoid doubt uh, I paid the relevant money back and uh, look, uh, that's what people should do. Because as long as Abbott admits to the use of funds and pays them back before someone informs the police, then he's in the clear. Much like when you murder someone and then inform the police, they let you off. But Labor frontbencher Mark Dreyfus was critical of the coalition's use of taxpayers' funds, claiming... Clearly there's definite scope for some serious investigation. Which means right now politicians in Canberra will be racing to find alleged misuse in other politicians' expense claims whilst simultaneously trying to admit to their own possible misuse before they get caught themselves. I admit I spent $600 on travel. I admit I spent $800 on accommodation. I admit I spent $500 on flights. Uh, ah, right here, got it. You claim $200 on business lunches. Police, arrest this ethically bankrupt man. No, wait, but I found this about you! Oh, yeah. I also spent $200 on business lunches. But I admit it! What's really surprising about this story, though, is the ability of politicians to claim wedding expenses on taxpayers' money. Because just being around people that you already often see in Parliament hardly makes it parliamentary business. That said, maybe you could claim the whole wedding as a tax write-off if you brought an auditor as your plus one and just kept everything political. I, Sean Maguire, promise to love you for as long as we both shall live. <coughs> and... <coughs> And more importantly, for the coming fiscal year. That's right. And do you, Cara, do you take Sean in sickness and in health? I do. And to stop the boats? Hmm? What? So you can claim it!
Oh, yeah, sure. Fantastic. Well, then I now pronounce you man and wife. And this entire wedding, a work expense. Finally tonight, New South Wales Labor leader John Robertson has revealed that in 2007 he was offered a $3 million bribe by murdered businessman Michael McGurk, who was in the midst of trying to buy the Currawong Workers' Retreat for $30 million. Mr Robertson told the media... This story's about an inappropriate offer, a man I barely knew, and a business deal I did not do. My mum used to read me that story when I was just a wee little tucker. Who was that man, that man with you? Why, he was a man I barely knew. And what did that mystery man want you to do? Why, a business deal, which I did not do. The impressive bit was when they found a rhyme for independent commission against corruption. So if Robertson didn't report the bribe and didn't accept the bribe, maybe Robertson just didn't know he was being bribed. So there's $33 million in this briefcase. For Currawong? $30 million is for Currawong. And the rest is just GST? Nope. Well, then there's too much money in this briefcase. Is there too much money in this briefcase? Or is there just enough money and some cream? Look, if Currawong costs $30 million and there's $33 million in this briefcase, that's a difference of $3 million. OK, look, I'm just going to leave this briefcase with the extra $3 million on the table, and whatever happens to it, happens to it. Well, I'll tell you what'll happen to it. It'll end up in lost and found. You can't leave $3 million lying around. Anyone could take it. Yes. 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 Oh, for God's sake. How a man so bad at maths came into possession of $33 million, I will never understand. So he didn't disclose it at the time and instead chose this week to reveal the attempted bribe, because apparently this week is national come clean about weird money shit week for politicians. But why come clean about it now? Either McGurk's murdered heart has been beating loudly beneath Robertson's floorboards and driving him mad, or some mundane event triggered his memory of the incident. And he was like, I'm sorry, we don't sell packets of eight McNuggets, it's either six or ten. And I was like, oh, stop being a McJerk. Jerk. And I don't even like Gherkins. Gherkin? So I stood up. McJerk? McGurkin? McGurk! Oh my God, McGurk! I remember, I remember everything! He had a briefcase, leather, he sat at my desk, his numbers, they didn't even add up! That's not how the GST works! Oh my God, I was offered a bribe! Now, according to Mark Rolf from UNSW's School of Social Sciences, I'm sure he wishes to understandably present himself as a, a clean-skinned politician and, and fair enough, but I think it's backfired to a great extent upon him. Big time! Because by not revealing it back in 2007, Robertson has somehow managed to make the act of not accepting a bribe for a business deal that didn't happen seem untrustworthy. In his mind, he must be thinking, I'm a goddamn hero for telling people about this now. I am a clean-skinned politician! Thank you. I never told anyone this, but seven years ago, I turned down a huge bribe from Michael McGurk. Why didn't you mention that seven years ago? I was a little confused. Why didn't you mention it four years ago when he was murdered? I was a little scared. Why are you mentioning it now? Gherkins. McGurk! Uh, no reason. And so, while Tony Abbott appears to have avoided any trouble despite spending taxpayers' money on a wedding, John Robertson's case of not accepting a bribe has now been referred to the Independent Commission Against Corruption. So the moral of the story is, if you do the wrong thing, tell someone about it. But don't you dare think about not doing the wrong thing and not telling someone about it, because people hate that. Good night. <laughs>